Chapter 9, we're starting Chapter 6 now, which is Linear Relations. It's a fairly short chapter. We have three sections. Uh, representing Patterns is the first section which we'll do today. Uh, 6.2 is Interpreting Graphs, then we'll have a little quiz. And then 6.3 is Graphing Linear Relations, and then that's it for the chapter. Uh, we'll do some review and then wrap up with an exam. Uh, on the inside front cover, you'll notice that we've got some uh, things that you should be able to do by the time you complete each section. Uh, for 6.1, representing patterns, you should be able to identify and explain a general pattern given a diagram, and you should be able to develop a linear equation in the form of y equals mx plus b, uh, where m and b are numerical values. Those are uh, coefficients and constants. And, from a and you'll create that from a diagram or a table of values. Um, so you can refer back to that uh, for studying purposes. Also for studying purposes, as we go through the notes, you can uh, copy out some definitions and some examples here in a bit of a study guide. So, 6.1. Representing patterns. First up, we do have this definition, which you can write in your study guide if you wish. It's for a linear equation. And that is an equation that makes a straight line when you graph it. So that's our first definition. Let's take a look at working example number one. Describe a pictorial pattern using a linear equation. And we're going to start to build some ideas here. So we've got four different figures shown here, figure one, two, three, and four. Figure one has a single uh, square. So the pattern starts with one square. And let's see, we'll use some color. The difference between figure one and figure two is that we have added these three pink squares to it. You can see that figure one is now not colored in, and I colored in three figure, uh, squares. So we've added three squares to get to figure two. And to get to figure three, again, we add three more squares. Figure two was a two by two box, which you can see here, and then we've added three more here. Figure four, same kind of idea. We add three more in the top right corner, and the non-shaded is the previous figure. So that's the pattern that has developed with this sequence by adding three squares each time. So we can create a table of values to indicate this pattern. So we can uh, chart two columns, the first column being the figure number, which we're going to call n as a variable. So figure one, two, three, and four. That's the easy part. Column two is the number of squares involved in the diagram. So in figure one, we had one. In figure two, we added three. So one plus three gives us four. We added another three in figure three. So four plus three is seven, and you can count them out. And then figure four, another three gives us a total of 10. And so now this chart is complete. So this is a linear relation. And that is because the values in each column increase by the same amount each time. So this column here goes up by one, one, two, three, four, and it potentially could keep going up by ones. This column, one to four goes up by three, four to seven is up by three, seven to 10 is up by three, and that pattern would continue as well. So this column goes up by one, this one goes up by three, that makes it linear. So that's what we're looking at here. And uh, that's another term that you need to know is linear relation. So that's what we're starting to work with. So now we can expand upon this a little bit. Uh, we can write the linear relation as a linear equation. So we're going to actually create an equation that represents the information in that pattern. So we're going to find the pattern that takes you from the first column to the last column. So 
We've made a big chart here just to illustrate the process. The first column is the figure number, which was the exact same column as the first chart that we had on the previous page. Ignore this for the moment. This column here on the right is the same as the right-hand column from the previous page. That is the same as what we already had. It's this middle stuff that we're uh, going to use um, in this process. So we're going to try and figure out how to go from this column to this column with the numbers. Um, so each figure has three more squares than the previous figure. So it goes up by three, so that's going to be kind of a magic number here. And the first step is that we're going to take our figure number and we're going to use that magic number and we're going to multiply the figure number by the magic number. So we're going to multiply each of these by three. That's going to give us another column. So that's going to be n times three and that's going to be the answer of the multiplication. So one times three is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine, four times three is going to give us 12. So now uh, we look at this number and we compare it to the number of squares. Well, three to one. We're going to use adding or subtracting. We use multiplication here. Now we're going to use adding or subtracting to figure out how to go from this to this. So three down to one. If we subtract two from three, then that gives us a one. Let's take a look at the next row. Six down to four. Again, if we subtract two, six will take us down to four. Nine, well, let's try it. Subtract two, yep, it gives us seven, so we can subtract two. Same thing here, 12 minus two will give you 10. So the number of squares in the last column is two less than when you multiply this by three. So that's the process. You multiply this number by three, then subtract two, and you'll end up with the number of squares. So we've determined a consistent pattern using just the numbers. So in words, the figure number times three minus two equals the number of squares. We can represent that using numbers and variables. So three times n, this is where the figure number, why we were calling it n. Three times your figure number, subtract two, is going to equal s, which was the number of squares in the diagram. So 3n minus 2 is equal to s, or you can also say s is equal to 3n minus 2. Doesn't matter which side these are on the equal, compared to the equal sign, as long as one side is an s and the other side is the 3n minus 2. It means the same thing. So we've done that now. We've created an equation that represents the linear relation. We can use that equation now to solve a more complex uh, situation. We only had four figures there, but what if we had 12 figures? You could draw it out and you could count it out if you wanted. Um, but we've got an equation now that can actually calculate the number for us fairly quickly. If we had a number like 12,000 for a figure number, you wouldn't be counting that. You wouldn't be adding it up. You would want to have access to an equation to be able to solve it. So let's figure this out. Figure 12 is what we're wondering, how many squares there are. So we've got our uh, equation, s is equal to 3n minus 2. We're trying to figure out s when n is equal to 12. If n is equal to 12, we're going to solve for s. So we can substitute in 12 for our variable n. So that means, means that this becomes s equals 3 times 12 minus 2. Remember, there's no multiplication symbol in here. The bracket itself uh, shows that it's multiplication. Um, so 3 times 12 is 36, and then minus 2. So 36 minus 2 gives you an answer of 34. S is equal to 34, so that means there are 34 squares in figure 12. And you could draw it out and you would find that that is correct. Just a little bit of detail here, this can also go into your study guide at the front of the book. Um, in this equation, 3n minus 2 equals s, we've got some definitions here. Your numerical coefficient, and I think we've talked about coefficients before, 
is the number three. This number that sits in front of our variable as a uh, multiplier, that's called the numerical coefficient. The variables in this equation are the n and the s. Those are letters that are used to represent uh, changing numbers. And then the constant in this case is a negative two. It says subtract two, but you can treat that as a negative two. Um, that would be the same as 3n plus negative 2 equals s. Those mean the same thing. So in this case, the constant is the negative 2. All right, so moving on. We figured out that we can calculate the number of squares in a particular figure number using that equation, but we can also figure out which figure number has a certain number of squares in it. We can reverse engineer it using the equation as well. So if we want to figure out which figure has 106 squares in it, we can do that. So in this case, S is now equal to 106. And we can plug that into the equation. And then instead of solving for S, we're going to solve for N. So S is equal to 3N minus 2 is your equation. Substitute 106 in for the S, so it goes over here, so that becomes 106 is equal to 3n minus 2. Now, in order to solve for this, we have to do something called opposite operations. And this is something that you're going to get really good at this year. So, what we're trying to do is we want to get the n all by itself on one side of the equal sign. To do that, we need to eliminate the things that are around it. And to do that, we use opposite operations. So if we look at the right-hand side, we've got 3n minus 2. Um, we start on the outside, and we work our way in towards the n. So this minus 2 is the furthest away from n, so to speak. So to get rid of that, we're going to actually add 2. Minus 2 and plus 2 becomes 0. So then all of a sudden, that's no longer on the right-hand side. But one rule when you've got an equal sign is, if you make a change on one side of your equal sign, you have to do the same thing on the other side of the equal sign, or it's no longer equal. So if we're going to add 2 to the right-hand side, then we also have to add it to the left-hand side. When you do that, and then simplify it, 106 plus 2 becomes 108. 3n minus 2 plus 2, well, those 2s cancel each other out. They equal 0 when you add them together. So that leaves us with just 3n on the right-hand side. So now we've got 108 is equal to 3n. This is a new equation. We're still trying to get n all by itself. So this now means 108 is equal to 3 times n, which we can actually write it as 108 equals n times 3. So now to get the n by itself, we need to do an opposite operation. Um, the reason I rewrote it this way is I want the n to be in the front, closest to the equal sign, and every, the 3 to be after it. Uh, so the opposite of times is divide. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, this 108 equals 3n, and we can actually divide by 3. So if we do that over here, 3n, and then this is a division sign here, divided by 3. If we do that to the right, we still have to do that to the left as well to keep it equal. So we're going to divide 108 by 3 as well. So now, 108 divided by 3 is equal to 36. And if you punch that into your calculator, that's what you'll get. It's a, it's a nice even number to work with. 3n divided by 3, well, 3 divided by 3 becomes 1. So that means these 3s divide out, and you're left with just n on the right-hand side. So now we've got this equation, 36 is equal to n. n is by itself on one side, we've got a number by itself on the other side, we're done. Now we just need to recognize that this n is the figure number. 
So figure number 36 is our answer. And going back to the original question, it's 36, figure 36 has the 106 squares. Now, we can double check our work, and we should double check our work. So we start with the original equation again. So 106 is equal to 3n minus 2. We've got a left side and a right side. 106, it's as simplified as it gets. It's just an, an integer. So we'll leave that side alone. It's the right side we're going to double check. So 3n minus 2 is our equation. We're going to substitute in what we've calculated, the 36, for the letter n. And then we're going to solve it and make sure that it equals the left side. So 3 times 36 was 108. Then we can subtract 2 from that, and it gets this to be 106. These match, so we've confirmed that we did the correct work, and we've got our correct answer. So figure 36 has 106 squares. So that's the process. So next up is to show you know to give this a try. So please, give it a go.